Hi there guys and welcome to another FPV guide video. Today we are going to be taking a look at a new multi-rotor or quad that is right now in Kickstarter. It is following the trend of making follow me multi-rotors. I find this type of multi-rotor very interesting because they are appealing to people that does not already have experience flying multi-rotors or model RC at all. So this is a whole different way of controlling an aircraft. As I mentioned, this is right now on Kickstarter and they are trying to get volume up on this product and you can get a lot of different award levels, different accessories, etc. However, my friends at HobbyWow.com have gotten hold of a production or pre-production sample in a box that they kindly sent to me for a unbox and a flight test. So the next couple of days, I'm gonna take this flying, but let's start out with unboxing and finding out what's in this kit. Just for reference, this kit here comes with a smart watch that is GPS driven. It is 369 and it will be 299 without a GoPro. So that's, I find very interesting, $299 for a quad with a control watch and a two axis gimbal. So that's an interesting price point. So let's take a look at what's inside. This is the box. I don't know if you can see it with all the lights here. And let's me crack it open. It's one of those things, you know, you pull it open here, then you pull it up here and it's coming up. Excuse me. On top here, we find the manual. And I gotta tell you, without a doubt, I had to read the manual because I have no idea how to fly an aircraft without a radio controller. So in the manual folder, you find a couple of things. The usual disclaimers, do not take this in your bathtub. Guys, seriously, if you're thinking about taking a multi-rotor in your bathtub, don't buy this stuff. The manual itself is actually a fairly slim little affair. And by the time you watch this video, I should already have scanned this and put it up on my blog at fpvguide.com. Basically, it starts out with saying where you can and shouldn't fly. And going through here, it goes through the setup for the smartwatch. And then it goes through the general functionality. Let's skip right over that because real men don't read manuals, except this time I had to read the manual. All right, popping it open. I really like that China is finally going away from styrofoam packaging and going to more environmentally friendly and less noisy cardboard. There you go. Here is the aircraft. That's really not, one of the things that's amazing with this, it's really small. It's not that big. It's very, very compact and very kind of dense, if you could use that word. Down here on the bottom, you see that there is a GoPro factor camera, and I'm gonna come back to that in just one minute. Let's unbox the rest. So, also in here, you can see there is a sleeve of propellers. It comes with two sets of propellers. These are twist-ons, and they're kind of sealed on the hub, so you know which ones are new. And they come in a nifty little sleeve like this one here. So let's pull that out. And then we have a charger kit. Let's take a look at that in just one minute, because I want to go straight to the smartwatch. Here it is. So that's called the X-Watch. And it's basically a little a box with a smartwatch. And I'm about to say the only thing it doesn't do is tell you the time. But let's check this out. It's actually really neat. There we go. And it comes in a nifty box, just like you would expect for a watch. And there it is. You can see right here, it has a number of buttons on the side for controlling and some buttons on the other side and the bezel can be rotated. Can you see this little point up here? So it comes on a little pillow, just like a collector's watch. I'm just gonna leave it right on the pillow and go through the quick explanation of this watch. Now here on the side, you find the power switch. You need to hold that firmly down for three seconds. So one, two, three, four. There, something's happening. We have light. 
and now we have the system coming up. When you get ready to fly, the first thing you need to do is turn the watch on, then the aircraft, and put the aircraft down facing you and be about five meters away. That's about 15 feet. Now, then when everything is started up, wait a couple of minutes, then when they both have GPS, you want to start out by tapping follow me one time. That's gonna get a green blinking light. That means it's ready to calibrate the compass. Once you get the green blinking light, you pick up the aircraft and turn it one lap around, 360 degrees, and the light should go off. You proceed then to do a forward salto, another 360 degrees, and now you have calibrated the compass. So that's what you gotta start with. And like I said, you do that by just a short tap on follow me. However, once you have done that, the next thing we're gonna do here is of course get ready to fly. So the way you do that is you push the start button, you see it right here. You hold that down for about three seconds and that's gonna arm and start the aircraft, which is gonna go 10 meters in the air or about 30 feet. Personally, I would have much rather seen it go three meters, 10 feet or something, because I don't like stuff jumping that high up on me right away, but that's just me. And the way we control it, once it's up there, you have altitude on a little dial up on the shoulder here. So by dialing that, you can make it go up and down. So basically, once it's up in the air and you've set your altitude, you can proceed to change the angle you want the camera to operate in. You do that by just turning the bezel here a little bit. And that's gonna turn the aircraft. Now notice, there's actually no gimbal control. That's because there is a barometer in the watch and a barometer in the aircraft. So the two knows how high they are and the aircraft will attempt to point the gimbal directly at the watch. So that means if you're wearing the watch and if you start crawling up a rock wall or stairs or something, it's going to keep the camera angled at you, which is a good thing since it's a follow me drone. Now up on the front is another feature I like here. This one is circle. And the way you use it, keep in mind, we don't have a lot of control over the aircraft. So basically you start the thing and you get it up in the air. Now, if you want it a little further away, you just walk away from it. Now, when you get ready to do the circle me, then you just press circle me and the aircraft is gonna do a 360 around you while pointing the camera at the watch again. Now follow me is kind of the same way. Again, you get the distance to the aircraft by walking closer or further away. Simply move yourself towards or away from the aircraft. Once you're ready and you feel it's a good distance, you just simply press follow me one time and that's gonna make the aircraft keep this distance and angle to you that you have been setting up by walking closer or further away and by adjusting the altitude right here. That's it. You push the follow me button and it's now basically following along with you. And when you're done, you can push it again, and that's gonna make it stop following you and hang where you park it. Now, when it comes to landing, there's a couple of ways to do this. So let's say you have just gone down the slope or you've been running or something, and it's time to land, make sure you park this thing over a flat surface because it doesn't know where a flat surface is. Tap one time on the red button, that's gonna make it start landing now, however, sometimes, let's say you're flying out and you're over water or something and you really don't want it to land there, you want it to go back to where it started. Then you simply hold the land button for three seconds. One, two, three, and you're gonna see the return to home light come on and the aircraft will now return to home and land where it started. You can cancel the return to home or the landing by tapping the land button one time and that's gonna put it back into the waiting pattern just like it normally is and you can continue to go back to follow me or whatever you want. The aircraft is good for about 20 minutes of flying. That's kind of a quick lowdown on the watch here. Obviously, I've never flown it like this, so what I'm gonna do is show you the rest of the aircraft and then over the weekend, I'm gonna get some flight time in and actually try out the watch and the follow me. I'm really excited about this because I think it's a different way of interacting with a drone that I frankly has not had very much experience with. Let's take a look at the drone itself. You have the unit right here, and this, let's start with the battery. It's a 3S, so 11 volts battery. 
you pop it open by pushing these things on the side and then you just pull it out. And here is then the 11 volt 5200 milliamp smart battery. It has the usual thing we're now used to that you can just tap on the end to see how much power. Tap and then hold down and it's gonna arm the battery. Tap and hold down and it's gonna disarm the battery. The very important thing they have it's an actual smart battery so if you have it charged and you don't use it for a couple of weeks it's gonna start discharging itself down to 67 percent which is the storage voltage for this battery so that's gonna happen after a couple of weeks and basically it's gonna save your battery from getting damaged because you had it fully charged and was not using it let's move on And down here on the front, you can see what is clearly a GoPro form factor camera. It sits in a quite compact little two axis gimbal. And I gotta say, two axis is so last year. However, the price point is right. So I have to like this gimbal, you know. This is also worth noticing, if you step up to $439, you can have this with a ball camera on a three axis gimbal shooting full 4K. However, this here is the entry level version that comes with this camera for $369 with camera. And it's worth noticing, oh, I didn't mention that. On the watch, up on top here on the watch, is the record and the still picture option. So with this particular camera, if you tap on the bottom up in the corner one time, you get a still shot. Now, if you hold it down until the record logo comes on, you'll be recording. To cancel the recording, you tap once again shortly. That's how you start and stop. And I like that this camera can both do still and video recording from the watch. And to quickly prove a point, I'm gonna remove this camera and put a GoPro in place. It has these usual twist off screwy thingies right here. And interestingly enough, this is a really close GoPro form factor camera because it has the correct mount right here with USB and HDMI. On the bottom, it has the SD card so that you can still get to it fairly easily. And because it has the built-in USB plug right here, when you put a traditional GoPro, I'll grab one, I have a GoPro 4 right here, which is the latest and greatest. And notice how this USB plug fits right in. You can just literally do like this and slide the camera on, there it goes. You finish the install by simply putting down the little bridge and screwing it back in place where the first one came from. There you go. And now we have installed a GoPro. So if you happen to already own a GoPro, you are able to buy this thing for $2.99 and stick your existing GoPro on here, as long as it's a GoPro 3 or 4. Now. Taking a closer look at this gimbal, you'll notice one thing. Once I put the GoPro on, the gimbal got a little unbalanced. I'm gonna compensate that by putting a piece of double-sided tape and a penny on the other side or whatever it takes because I always want the gimbal to be perfectly balanced before I start flying. The other thing in the kit was of course the propellers. So before we move on, let's take a close look at the propellers. And here we have a couple. Like I said, they kind of shrink wrapped here and they screw right onto these. And remember, since this is the video quad, you want to make sure you balance the propellers before you get started. So simply use something like a Dubro propeller balancer. What I did was I put tape on the end of the propeller balancer stick here. It's actually made for true propellers, but I, by wrapping a little bit of tape on the end, I can get the propeller to stick so it just has a snug fit right there. That's all there is to it. Now I just simply put it right on the wheel and this looks pretty balanced. So if one of the propellers has an imbalance and tend to go one way or another, 
you find out which end of these pro props is the lighter and then you just simply grab a little piece of gaff tape or clear tape and you I just would tack it right here on the edge just kind of like that so I can see and then I let go oh that was clear too much and that way I move the tape until I get a perfectly balanced propeller the reason you want balanced propellers is because it's just like when you drive your car. You know, if there's an unbalanced wheel, you can feel it in the steering wheel. So imagine there's an unbalanced propeller and here's our gimbal and this aircraft does like that. So that's going to contribute jello to your camera. So always balance your props first. Well, with that, I think I'm ready to go and fly. So the next thing I'm going to do, of course, is charge the battery and charge my camera. I'm going to test the included camera against my original GoPro. But I think for $70 extra and the functionality to start stop recording, the included camera is probably a good option. While I put together some flight video for you, check out hobbywow.com's website and naturally the Kickstarter. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash bowphoto, and also my Instagram, instagram.com slash fpvguy, to stay tuned for more videos and flight videos with the uh, X-Eagle from FlyPro.